Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Electra completes application to bring its EL9 to U.S. skies. EVO's hybrid electric airplane emerges from stealth mode. And Vertical Aerospace shows new Velo EVTOL. And I'm your host, Holland Blake. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight. From electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Electra completes application to bring its EL-9 to U.S. skies. Electra is walking its EL-9 hybrid electric aircraft into the formal certification phase, filing its application with the FAA to begin the Part 23 process. Work with the FAA now shifts from compliance and development to acceptance of the certification plan and building out the test program. Electra CEO Mark Allen said, quote, this certification application signals that the EL-9 is fast becoming a reality and reflects the progress our team and the FAA have made together, end quote. The EL-9 is built around Electra's ultra-short concept using a hybrid electric propulsion system and a blown lift wing that pushes airflow over the surface to generate lift at impressively low speeds. This design claims to give the aircraft the ability to take off and land in just 150 feet, meaning it can operate from small pads, parking areas, docks, industrial sites, or remote clearings. Short field capability is tied into the company's broader idea of direct aviation, a model that ditches major hubs entirely in favor of point-to-point -point regional flying. Electra hopes operators will use the EL-9 to link locations that lack the traffic or infrastructure for standard regional aircraft. The hybrid electric part supports this message by lowering operating costs without sacrificing payload and range convenience. After the break, Archer makes gutsy acquisition of Hawthorne Airport. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. Archer makes gutsy acquisition of Hawthorne Airport. Archer Aviation announced the completion of Phase 1, putting them on track to have their own playground in Hawthorne Airport of California. They're going for the master lease from the city of Hawthorne along with the associated subleases, which will grant control of the airport complex. The deal will hopefully serve as the primary hub for Archer's LA air taxi system. They call Hawthorne a profitable enterprise, stressing the fact they believe it has, quote, significant additional upside that has yet to be realized. They plan to acquire the FBO and passenger terminal in 2026 as part of phase two of the transaction. Saudi GACA advances Archer e-taxi deployment. The Saudi Arabian General Authority of Civil Aviation announced the signing of an agreement with Archer Aviation to collaborate in the development of a regulatory pathway for the introduction and scale-up of EVTOL air taxi ops in the kingdom. The establishment of such a pathway will accelerate the deployment of air taxi services, and the framework is planned to align with the FAA's certification pathway as well. The strategy seeks to enable early route testing and introducing service in Riyadh, Jeddah, and critical giga projects such as Red Sea Global. Astronaut Johnny Kim plus two cosmonauts return from the ISS. NASA astronaut Johnny Kim and Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Rysakov and Alexei Zubritsky returned to Earth on December 9th after accomplishing an eight-month mission aboard the ISS. The spacefarers returned on board the Soyuz MS-27 spacecraft, which departed the space station at 8.41 p.m. Eastern, December 8th, and landed in Kazakhstan at 12.03 a.m. Eastern. During the crew's 245 days in space after launching on April 8th, they orbited the Earth 3,920 times and traveled a total of nearly 104 million miles. U.S. reps push Congress to reinvest in sustainable fuels. 
Four U.S. representatives are taking another swing at getting sustainable aviation fuel legislation into government. And hopefully this time it will stick. The Securing America's Fuels, also referred to as SAF Act, was introduced in the House by Representatives Sharice Davids, Mike Flood, Troy Carter, and Tracy Mann. The SAF Act aims to bolster the existing framework under the 45Z Clean Fuel Production Tax Credit. If passed, the new provision would reverse the SAF credit cut and keep the 45Z tax credit in effect through 2033. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. EVO's hybrid electric aircraft emerges from stealth mode. EVO has unveiled the product of more than eight years of rigorous development, the EVO 810 hybrid electric regional aircraft, and a lengthy list of customers to go with it. The Montreal-based company has secured conditional agreements and options for 450 planes, setting the stage for an entry into service in the early 2030s. The clean sheet design is backed by investment from Boeing and supported technically by Pratt & Whitney Canada. It comes as arguably one of the most promising yet unexpected hybrid electric launches the regional market has ever seen. The first wave of interest came back in 2023, when two major airlines signed for 250 aircraft with options for 200 more. EVO says that momentum has continued as the 810's design entered later stages, and with the current state of regional air travel, it seems demand will remain on their side. The company reports that more than 5,000 regional aircraft are expected to reach retirement age in the next two decades, and that the 50 to 100 seat market will need upwards of 7,500 replacements. The industry has felt the effects of that gap, as roughly 2,650 regional jets and turboprops have been retired in the last five years, despite only 750 new ones entering service. This represents the global fleet shrinking by more than a quarter. After these messages, Vertical Aerospace shows new Velo eVTOL. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Vertical Aerospace shows new Velo eVTOL. The VX4 program has borne new fruit in the Velo, a six-passenger eVTOL from Vertical Aerospace. The Velo is an offshoot of the VX4, which has long been the face of Vertical's eVTOL efforts. They've done some pretty solid flights in their test regime, taking off in real-world conditions and hovering around the tarmac a bit. Cynics may not be impressed, but there are plenty of eVTOL companies working on scaled-down versions of future aircraft, so Vertical is doing quite well for themselves. Vertical cites a top speed of 150 miles per hour and a 100-mile range, with seating for six in zero emissions comfort. The Velo has gotten some improvements here and there, but the underlying specs remain quite close to the VX4s. The cabin has been upsized for an extra hint of luxury and comfort in the standard trim, but air taxi operators will be happy to know that opulent legroom can be replaced with two more seats for paying passengers. Part of the announcement shows a Velo next to a whole lineup of luggage, hinting that a full load could consist of six passengers, six carry-ons, and six checked bags down below. That's a nice little clue toward their eventual purpose, most likely as feeders for airline operations. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.